when we speak of north indian rivers we should say indus ganges and brahmaputra or we can say satluj ganges and brahmaputra now let us take up rivers in the peninsula region peninsula india we have the mahanadi to start with i want to take all the rivers only major rivers rivers of great importance those only i will touch here the rest you please see the map you study explore find out look into the general knowledge book and try to enrich yourself the study should not be examination oriented it should be from a knowledge point of view okay godavari river takes birth near trambaka mahanadi first of all mahanadi mahanadi river it is a mighty river across mahanadi we have built the hirakud dam the longest dam we have across maha let us come to godavari now godavari takes birth at trambaka near nasik trambaka and then it is joined by many other tributaries and flows towards east and then it joins the bay of bengal next we have krishna river krishna too takes birth near nasik actually mahabaleshwar the place is mahabaleshwar flows down south then towards east is joined by number of rivers number of rivers say the tributaries are bhima tungabhadra river koina river ghataprabha malaprabha all these rivers happen to be the tributaries of krishna river river krishna and we have built nagarjuna sagar dam across river krishna nagarjuna sagar dam many more dams are there the chief of them is nagarjuna sagar dam come down south you have kaveri kaveri takes birth at tala kaveri in kodagu the british called kodagu as kurk kodagu or kurk it takes birth at talakaveri and from there along with the number of tributaries joining it it flows in the eastern direction at times it faces towards south tamil but ultimately it goes and joins bay of bengal some of the rivers that join kaveri river are hemavati simsha kapila arkavati river lakshman tirtha suvarnavati river bhavani river all these are the tributaries of river kaveri usually when we say the important rivers of peninsula india we say mahanadi godavari krishna kaveri if we say deccan plateau again maha to you live out you say godavari krishna kaveri deccan plateau if you say peninsula plateau mahanadi too can be taken into consideration because peninsula plateau spreads to a larger area than the deccan plateau deccan plateau is limited it ends up here itself peninsula plateau comes till here now let us look into the west flowing rivers the two rivers which run parallel to each other moving towards west and joining the arabian sea are narmada and tapati narmada and tapati rivers narmada is a very long river of all the rivers of india the longest is brahmaputra in the deccan plateau or the peninsula plateau narmada is the longest river. as far as the southern peninsula is concerned we say narmada is the longest river when you take entire india into account it is brahmaputra river narmada takes birth at amarkantak hills amarkantak hills 
in the Vindhya Ridge. And I had told you earlier that Narmada is, has many dams across it. Many, many dams. Parallel to it runs Tapati. Tapati takes birth in the Multai Hills. Multai Hills. See, these two are chief rivers in central India. Then you have a number of rivers along the west coast. But rivers are all short. They are not long. They take birth in the western hill range and they join Arabian Sea just as Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri took birth in the Sahyadri's western hills and moved towards east. These moved towards the west, which are the main thing. Sabarmati river here. Sabarmati river. Sabarmati ashram is on its bank. Thanks. Ujra. Then you have Mandovi river. Mandovi river. It flows here. Near Goa. In Goa. Panaji. The city of Panaji is on the banks of Mandovi river. Zuwari. Zuwari flows in Goa. Then you have Bedi in North Uttarakanda. North Kerala, you have Bedi river. You have Sharavati river. Sharavati too flows in Uttarakanda. Then you have Kali. Kali is another mighty river. Maybe a short river, a mighty turbulent river. Kali that joins the Arabian Sea, taking birth in the western hills. For those who like to have water adventures, Kali provides the right place. Then you have Netravati river. On the banks of Netravati river you have Dharmasthala. Netravati joins the sea at Mangalore. It is another mighty river. Then you have Periyar in Kerala. One more mighty river here. I have named a few. If you make a list, you have not less than 60 to 70 rivers starting from Gujarat to Kanyakumari, all flowing towards the west. The coastal line never finds dearth of water because of these rivers. Because you get heavy rain on the western part of the western coast, feeding all these rivers. So, in the coastal line, they grow mainly rice and sugar cane. Because these two are crops which need a lot of water. Now let us discuss about irrigation. Irrigation is a word which we commonly use in India. Everyone uses, speaks of irrigation. What is irrigation? Irrigation is an artificial supply of water for the purpose of agriculture. Where rainfall is not enough or where you have dearth of water and you can't irrigate, the land is fertile, you have to go for irrigational activity. You have to take up irrigation projects. India has the largest area under irrigation. We are number one nation in the world from the viewpoint of area under irrigation. India stands first and China stands second. We have brought all possible lands in the nooks and corners of the country into irrigation through irrigation projects, agriculture by irrigation projects. Why irrigation is required? Why should we have irrigation? Some people may say, you said we have enough rainfall in the country, we have a network of rivers. Why? Why irrigation? Yeah, this is a question that has to be answered. India is mainly an agricultural country. About 65 to 70 percent people in our country, they are dependent on agriculture. When that is the case, in case there is a shortage in rainfall or the rainfall is uncertain or 
the monsoons are late. Monsoons are late. Then people, farmers especially, they get put into trouble. Those who are involved in agriculture need regular and sufficient water supply. Sometimes what happens for 15 days there will be heavy rainfall in June. And next 15 or 20 days there won't be a drop of water. Farmers, they believe that everything is smooth and they start sowing the seeds. Or replantation, replanting the uh, paddy seedlings. But rains stay. They get disappointed. In India, we mainly depend on monsoon rainfall. We have enough rainfall, no doubt. But these monsoons sometimes turn uncertain. We say monsoons are seasonal. They come in certain seasons. Even within the season, they again, they are extremely seasonal sometimes. For a month, there won't be rains at all. Then there will be floods again, rainfall floods. So we should be able to overcome the seasonal nature of rainfall. Secondly, it is uncertain. You will not be able to predict. Even meteorology department putting up their best, sometimes they will not be able to forecast exactly. 24 hours, 48 hours, forecast goes well, very well. Weather forecast, 3 days, 4 days, up to 1 week. Beyond that, you have to study the movement of air, winds in the Indian Ocean and also the Mediterranean Sea. And these turn to be uncertain. Clarity won't be there in what they say. They say only positivity. Then third one is that they are uneven. The whole country or one whole state will not get even rains. Certain parts get rains, certain parts do not get rains. Uh, there are the cyclones, that, this. So this uneven nature also puts the, puts the Indian farmers who are totally dependent on rainfall for their agriculture into a desperate situation. So crops like rice, sugar cane, which need lot of water, will not be able to give you the best yield or sometimes the crops may even dry up. Sometimes they may dry up totally. Even if they give a weed, somehow they resist, they withstand and farmer puts all his efforts, the yield may not be up to the expectation because rains have been uneven. And these uneven rains will be followed by floods next. The whole crop will be submerged in water. He will be praying within a day or two let the floods recede. If the floods don't recede, then the entire field will get devastated. So to increase the heat, the production of crops, we don't have any other spite, any other way out, but to take up lots of agricultural projects in the country and see that these difficult periods we are in a position to overcome. Hence, irrigation is absolutely essential though we are blessed with good rains, nice fields and lot of rivers. Thank you.